Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to do the mid-year book freak out tag. I tried to mostly answer these questions beforehand so I'd be a little prepared, but I think for some of the questions I'm not as prepared. Um, so the first question is the best book that you've read so far this year. So far I've read 67 books this year. I haven't read like a total slam dunk five star read yet in 2021 and by this point in 2020 i already had but i thought of a few for a middle grade it would definitely be walk two moons by sharon creech it was just like a really lovely experience and a family that i will i won't forget anytime soon i think the voice of the narrator and the elements of it that made you understand that this is coming from the point of view of a young girl um, but at the same time that it's elevated that it's meaningful that it's very thoughtful that's something that I just think is so memorable. For adult fiction, two books that I really love this year so far are The Secret Lives of Church Ladies and Acts of Desperation. These are both really tight, short books. One is a book of short stories that really delve deeply into the experiences of women. They both had elements of it where they were very deep, sometimes toxic and hard to read, and reading experiences that I think have been unmatched so far in 2021. Acts of Desperation, for example, I read on a car ride back home and I couldn't stop reading even though everything that was happening I was like, why? And for The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, it's on par with Sabrina and Karina for me of a short story collection that really worked and like pretty much every story was really good. And then for adult nonfiction, that would be The Undocumented Americans. Um, this is probably one of the first books that I read in 2021 and still the best nonfiction book that I've read so far this year, I think. I haven't read that much nonfiction this year, honestly. I've read, I probably read more last year percentage-wise so far, but The Undocumented Americans is a book of essays and it's about looking at different kinds of immigrant experiences in the United States. Just really, really good, gripping, and passionate <laughs> about the topic. Question number two is the best sequel that you've read so far this year. I've only read just a couple. I read um, the second and third volumes of Heartstopper and those are pretty good. I definitely don't feel like as I'm reading more of it that I'm like getting anything to the level of the first volume. It might be a series that I pick up here and there but I, I don't think I'm as excited to continue picking them up like right when they come out but they are very just sweet graphic novels about a relationship and there's a little bit of romance and yeah identity and things like that and then the other sequel that I read this year is Good Girl Bad Blood and this is the follow-up to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder I actually think I like the sequel more than I like the original book it just continues on the mystery story that started in the first book question number three is a new release that you haven't read but you want to I have some to show you <laughs> one that is like on my list next is Blackout and this is by a lot of different authors I also saw this is going to be made into a Netflix series which or either a movie or a series but something on Netflix so that's exciting and I also have the audiobook from Libra FM so that's like on my to-do list I have the next Emily Henry book people we meet on vacation um, this one just came in on hold for me finally I'm just looking for a, a nice fluffy romance that was kind of one of the things that I was looking forward to this year is maybe reading just a few of them and I haven't read that many in the past couple months so I'm hoping that this is nice and fluffy just like Beach Read was which I really enjoyed I also have The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Oster tag. I've read quite a few Molly Knox Oster tag books at this point, and the one that I've loved the most was The Witch Boy. But this is just exciting because it's a new release, and it's supposed to be a sapphic graphic novel, I believe. I mean, there's girls kissing on the back there. But, and then this is what the art looks in the inside. So excited for that one. That one's definitely been on my list and finally the hold came in. Another new release that I want to get to but I haven't read yet is The Premonition by Michael Lewis. I'm sad to say this is only an Audible exclusive so I can't listen to the audiobook and that makes me really angry. It makes me actually not want to read this book. Yeah, it's supposed to be a really narrative driven look at COVID-19 and how it, everything went wrong basically on the government level. I've heard it reads like a, like a thriller. I have a few others that I don't have. Uh, copies of because I'm still on hold for them. One of them is Crying in H Mart and another one is A Place to Hang the Moon which I had to return because it had a long wait list and I didn't get to it in time and then also Somebody's Daughter which I'm also on hold for and I have the audiobook from Libra FM as an ALC so another one that I really want to get to that's a new release. Question number four is the most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I only really had two that I know that I'm really looking forward to and one of them 
is the new release from Sally Rooney and that's Beautiful World Where Are You? I believe it comes out either September or October. I don't even know what it's about. I've just seen the cover and I think that's enough for me. And then the other one is a memoir and it's called Seeing Ghosts and I think the cover of it really intrigues me and also Kat Chow is from NPR and I've listened to some of her stuff on NPR podcasts so I am excited and it kind of gives me the same vibes of why fish don't exist that's the book that it kind of reminds me of the cover of it and the fact that they both come from NPR backgrounds um, so I'm hoping that it's just as good as why fish don't exist. Question number five is the biggest disappointment that you've read this year. Uh, I'm sad to say uh, the more I think about it, the more I want to rate Lot by Brian Washington two stars. I wanted to read millennial fiction by a man um, and I've only really read millennial fiction from women so that's one aspect of it that I was looking forward to it. Um, I know he has like a full novel too but I haven't read that one yet. I don't know if I really want to after I've read a lot. And the audiobook experience of it was really not good and Brian Washington's parts because he narrates parts of it were the parts that I didn't like. I liked all the other narrators so that was kind of like a bit. I don't know. It just didn't didn't really do it for me. And then the other disappointment that I had was All's Fair in Middle School. This is by Victoria Jameson who created one of my favorite graphic novels for kids, Roller Girl, and I thought that this book was just not it. It was bloated, it had too many things going on. I felt like I hated the, the way that the family interacted with each other. It just felt like the main character was really being not taken care of by her parents. The biggest surprise is question number six and my biggest surprise was definitely Witches of Brooklyn. It's a middle grade graphic novel that I didn't have that many um, anticipation for. I didn't really know what to expect. I tried to read The Okay Witch which is another like witchy middle grade graphic novel and I didn't really like it so I gave up on that one and so I wasn't really thinking that this was going to be anything major like a three and a half or a four star read. It was really good. I thought that the way that they developed the characters with the two aunts and the main character Effie was just flawless. I didn't care that much about the plot but I think that the characters in it were so strong that that's what made it go to the next level for me as a middle grade graphic novel. I can't wait for the second one which is coming out pretty soon. Question number seven is favorite new author, a new to you author or a debut author? Definitely Disha Filia. That is a person that I'm going to try to check out anything that she writes after reading The Secret Lives of Church Ladies and enjoying it so much. I'm curious if um, Filia will do a novel or another collection of short stories. I don't know, but I'm up for whatever. And then also recently I read my first Nina LaCour book and I really, really enjoyed it. I read Watch Over Me and I thought that it was just oh haunting and it really i felt like i was in the world that she created like the setting that she created on this like farmhouse as this young woman who's aging out of the foster system takes a job as a teacher there and stays with this family and it's about her dealing with her past and so it goes back and forth between memories that she had and there's also like ghosts involved and i don't usually enjoy kind of muted fantasy in that way but I really enjoyed it in this book. I thought that it was really well done. Definitely made me want to read more. It's a very hard-hitting young adult, which is something that I enjoy, um, and contemporary in a way that I really liked, and a character study too, which is something that I really enjoy in fiction. Question number seven is a favorite newest fictional characters. I just want to say all the sweet girls, sweet girl main characters that I've read so far this year. Lily from When You Trap a Tiger, so sweet, so lovely. I just want to give her a big hug. The main character from Allergic and the main character from Witches of Brooklyn. I love girl main characters in graphic novels and a lot of them have just been so good this year. I, they're just like sweet girls that I just want to protect and take care of. <laughs> Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. Uh, no book has made me cry this year. Editing me here to say that that is a lie. I actually did cry reading The Undocumented Americans, which is a book that I talked about earlier in the video. Definitely by the end of it, I think the last chapter specifically, it made me think a lot about my dad. I had like little single tears rolling down. Not like bawling because it's hard to make me cry reading a book, but definitely that book I think is the closest to the answer of this question. 
I have been emotional about a few reads. Definitely This Is Your Time by uh, Ruby Bridges, which is a really short kids nonfiction book. Also American Baby uh, had a lot of moments where I just felt so sad for the biological mother and biological son of the story. It's a nonfiction book that looks at adoption and how and what mothers, teenage mothers, were really taken advantage of in the 50s and 60s, what their options really were in that time period, um, which were not very many options and how a lot of adoption agencies took advantage of them um, and they used you know like religion and societal advantages like they had more money and things like that to take advantage of girls which is really sad another book that made me emotional was five days at memorial there are definitely aspects of this story that really got to me it's a book that i had some issues with for sure and i talked about that when i reviewed it but it's still a book that is painful to read and just to know all of these people that died that didn't really need to die that one looks into a specific hospital after hurricane katrina um, and some doctors and nurses decided that some people were not going to make it and assisted their deaths question number 11 is a book that made you happy concrete rose by angie thomas though it's a hard-hitting why a contemporary set in the 90s it's still a book that made me really happy it's a book that made me smile quite a lot and i think that all has to do with the dynamics of angie thomas's characters and the way that they are with each other how they interact with each other the relationships between like parents and and kids and those kids and their babies um it's just a really really sweet character cast I think that's one of Angie Thomas's strongest suits when it comes to her writing is how she writes characters interactions with each other question number 12 is the most beautiful book that you've bought slash received this year so I haven't bought any books this year I think this was the same thing that happened last year and then I think I ended up just putting beautiful covers so here again are some covers of books that I read this year that I've really enjoyed they're very pretty but I don't really buy books all of my books come from the library so i haven't bought or received any books this year and question number 13 books that you need to read by the end of this year the ones that i mentioned um i also just have like a bunch of other things like here's just like a little a little book haul for you guys i guess i have jukebox another middle grade graphic novel this is probably my next read house of sticks by Lee Tran. I'm hoping this is as good as like Saigon, which is my favorite nonfiction book of last year. We'll see. It's another immigrant story. We Run the Tides. I also have this one out from Libra Femme as an ALC. I have read it. And uh, Infinite Country. I've heard really good things about this book. And it's nice and short, which I've been enjoying this year. Um, Summer at Meadow Wood. I just learned recently that Amy Rebecca Tan, who wrote A Kind of Paradise, which is a book I loved, I think last year is when I read it, um, has another book out and I had no idea and it's come out, it's been out for quite a bit at this point. So I probably should also mention like The Warmth of Other Suns, which I still haven't finished. And it was my second quarter goal and the second quarter is ending now. So maybe by the end of the year, this will be done. <laughs> There will be plenty and plenty of more books, I think, um, that I'll want to get to. But these are just the ones I'm thinking of right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.